invest in the Commander. Best. We are got no regrets. What's the plan? Yes. GSM. In the service of Iron. Welcome back. It is time for some incredible Code A matches. This is the evening session of the round two of season three of 2012 of GSL Code A. And today it gets a little bit crazy. We already had a couple of really interesting players this morning, but the games that we are going to see now are insane. Yeah, it is absolutely insane. A lot of these players are actually coming from Code S. Yeah. Uh, several of them. There's basically, I think every round has had someone in Code S at some point. I can't think of one of the rounds we have today that doesn't have a former Code S player at least. Code A is the new Code S. We have so yeah. many good players now, it is actually a little bit crazy. Currently our first match is going to have Genius and Byung playing, but later on we have players like Alive, we have MC, we have Roro. It's just, it's incredible. It's a sick lineup of players. We have yeah. Ryung coming in as well. You mentioned Roro. Creator, Creator Byung. Byung. I think we've pretty I much... I think that, that's it. A genius, I don't know if we mentioned him yet, yeah. but he's going to be playing as well. What a crazy lineup of players. All of these guys are fighting, of course, to get to that third round, to have the opportunity to get straight back into Code S, because exactly. a lot of them are coming right from Code S. They are all safe now, so the first round is gone, so there's no risk of actually dropping down into Code B, but now we have the second round, so they want to get straight into Code S, and of course dodge those up and down matches. Now here's our information about the finals. It's going to be on October 20th. It's going to be at Coex. Make sure if you're in Seoul, you come on down. It's at Samsung Station. Great place uh, to watch the finals. Have a lot of finals there for StarCraft 1 in the past. So, great place to have a StarCraft 2 finals. I'll be there. It's going to yep. be exciting. That's definitely going to be really, really good. And well, currently we are waiting for our first match to start. It's going to be a Terran versus Brodos. Today we start things off with Byung against Genius. Yep. Well, of course, also we had a couple of earlier matches. I'm not quite sure if we have a quick look at them before we start things I off, I guess so. So here yes. is uh, the match list. If you haven't watched the VODs yet, you're going to watch them later. Yep. Cover your ears, minimize the screen, something like that, so you don't get the results spoiled. We're about to have a little interview, so you guys can see. Hello, and so of course here are the total results broken down by exact scores. Vampire is superior to Parting, at least in this season. We have Maru taking the win over ASD, Hyun with no problems against Yoda, and Hack in the end, as already mentioned in the interview, was able to beat the Protoss player finale from Team MVP. Yeah, a lot of 2 0s here. Uh, a lot of close games, though. Hyun looking a little bit vulnerable in, in his second game, but he was able to take the win. Incredible play there. Maru with two quick wins over ASD. Yeah. Not a long day of match. Now, here is our lineup of players we're about to see tonight. All eight of these guys, only four of them will go to the round three. It's kind of hard to believe that not all of them can get through here. It was definitely really interesting already in the first round, but now we are in the second round. And just look at this lineup. Young able to defeat first in the first round. Now we have him up against Genius, Creator Prime later. In a team match, he has to face his own teammate, Young. And Alive is up against MC, whereas Casper player Roro has the final match today against the Protoss player. All right, well, look at this. Slayer's Genius, formerly Next Genius, from way back when, the BlizzCon champion of 2010. He's playing against Byung here. CJ Anthos player who's really hasn't proved himself all too much so far, but he was able to advance out of his first round. Slayer's team coach Sela mentioned earlier that Genius is well prepared and uh, is actually on the assumption that he will win uh, quite easily today. So he is going into this match with uh, a lot of confidence. Yeah. As he should. Uh, he is definitely the favorite here. He's got a lot of experience in StarCraft 2. He has done every build in the book from cannon rushes to two gate proxies to late game. There's no part of the game he's inexperienced in. He's been playing it for so long. 
Here we have the two of them, uh, Terran versus Protoss. Our first map today is going to be Abyssal City, one of the maps that you usually don't want to play when you're a Protoss player. Genius won't be too happy about the first map here, but going into this match as a very confident player, as we already heard earlier, at least due to a team coach Seller. Right now the map is loading and we want to find out who is going to advance to the third round of Korea and who will have to play in the up and down matches in the next season. This is CJ and this Byung against the Slayers Genius at the GSL Code A Round 2. Brought to you by Colin Wolf. GSL sponsored by Hot 6 and starting to the right side of the map we have the CJ Antus player starting in red is the Terran who calls himself CJ Antus Pyong He won one of the Code A qualifiers, then in the first round of Code A he was able to take down first as mentioned before. Now he's up against another Protoss player. To the left side we have the Slayers Protoss in blue. It is. Slayers Genius. I'm playing for Dex. Um, of course, the next is Horn, joining Team MVP, and last but not least, now moving into Slayers. And funny as it is, Genius had to face a Terran player in the last round. He had to face Dream, and he was able to succeed with a 2-0 victory. So currently, we have both of these players in uh, the exact same matchup that they played in the first round of Kodai. Yes. By the way, notice we have the game directing by Heaven today, so a little bit different than Legend. Notice the subtle differences. This guy is actually known to be the best Zergrim 2 observer in all of Korea. And here comes the probe scout, not seen by the STB, and in fact I cannot believe that yeah, the watchtower could not see the STB, which is actually proxying a barracks right now. Very interesting build here. While well, he builds a barracks in the uh, ba main base and therefore sells to his opponent the idea that he's actually going for a normal build without gas into expansion. Oh, a few blocks! Oh wow, well, this means he's going to be completely in the dark. He has no idea. He has to assume at this point that this is going to be a gas that expand. Might also be attack, but what he definitely does not assume is that there is a second barracks hidden on the map. Yeah, there's no way for him to assume that. It does annoy the SCV here, but that's not going to be too useful in scouting this barracks. So far, skipping the zealot as well. He may decide to add that in. Oh, second gas. The it's one thing style. that's of course really important here is that the timing of the uh, command center, the orbital is a little bit too late and this is why it's so important to block the probe out because if you get in there and you see the timings for the first marine for all the upgrades, so you see the number of pro uh, SCVs, then with good deduction you can definitely make sure that you have an idea of what's going on. And funny as it is, Genius is addicted to Void Rays. Let's be real for a second. We, he's been through therapy, he's moved through different teams, but at the end of the day, he is still very much addicted to Void Rays. And you know, I suppose it's possible we see a proxy robo, but this is genius we're talking about here. A build that is used quite often on this map if he actually proxies the robo is a 4 gate with wall prism into the main base. We've seen this to be quite successful, but no, he is going as assumed for the Stargate tech here. Uh, this is going to be such a funny game. It is. It really is. Uh, I think Genius will actually get the better hand on a map of this size though, with the choice of where he's proxying his structure versus how this game is going to play out for Pyong. Uh, I think Genius will have the advantage. He's going to have the ability to attack his opponent directly and also be able to just run up his ramp and defend. Because the rush distance is so far, it's not like he's going to be scared of an attack that's going to come as long as he has a chance to see it. Now, with this Void Ray all in, you can go up to three gates. You go basically pure stalker with Void Rays. He's getting a sentry right now just to be safe. You use the Void Rays vision to pick off Marines using the superior range. The Marines walk out now, but the only Marines that Genius can actually see are the ones that are heading straight to the Zanaga Watchtower. The rest of the Marines is unscouted so far. Yeah, he's, oh, he's going to be losing his uh, sentry here. Oh, this could oh. change everything. He sees it. But he's not able to take it down. The sentry goes to the high ground and will be able to cast a force field. But he doesn't do it. He walks back. The Stalker is also trying to get in here. While well, the first few probes are now being attacked, the Marines are being pulled off. He's but the rest of field. them come in. He's got a force field, he doesn't do it, he wants to wait. This is so interesting, He's, it's as if he wants to use Guardian Shield instead. 
And here we go, more and more harvesters are being killed. And now he's forced to get trapping the Marines, but not good enough. The rest of them runs back. The Voidra now getting into the main base of Young, who has no Marines, only a few Marines in the back. And with the three gateways, he's going to easily be able to defend against Drone's attack. Right now he starts the engineering bay, but the SPs are down, he's charged level 3. Oh wow, so many harvesters are going to die here for Pyong. Genius doing a great job here. And Pyong, the Terran player, was able to take down quite a few bros, but in the end, it's currently the Protoss player who gets the better end of the deal. Yeah, absolutely so. This is what I was talking about earlier, you know, he's got the ability to just do this. There's no way for Pyong to stop him. And now he's not even mining. His command center is losing hit points, he's gonna have to repair that. Ah, oh, this is such a great position for Genius. He needs another pylon though, and he's making it. He's making it over here. He knows he's not going to be able to go up the ramp at the front. There's going to be a bunker there. Ah, oh, the second Voidre is not done just yet. He's currently building it, but how many does he have? Only the one. There comes the rest of the Stalkers though, moving in, and this bunker is just finishing in time. Yeah, but again, the bigger concern will of course become the main base. How many units will he warp in there? And even if he warps in units in the main base, he's got to be careful because he doesn't want to warp in too few that he loses them. And here we go already, the second Void Ray is now done. The first warp in the main base was successful. Ah, uh, this is almost unlivable for Pyong. He's got to micro perfectly, he just doesn't quite have the unit numbers he needs. More Marines falling. The units at the front for Genius were not being controlled though, he actually just sat them there, and that could have been really useful to have. All the Void Rays are still alive, and this is definitely a huge problem for Pyong right now. The Void Rays are still there, and now the Gateway support is also in the main base. Another round of warp ins. The Marine count is at 14 now. A nice micro by Genius saving his Void Rays, and the rest of the Gateway units just wreak havoc in the main base of Pyong. I think he's dead here. There's just no way to deal with that last boy ray pulls it back oh my god three hit points left and that is gonna be all she wrote this is definitely gonna be it only three marines left two or four gg G -G. very well played by genius here interesting start in this best of three yeah that is genius style man as soon as i saw <laughs> Sella in the booth with a thumbs up as soon as i saw the second gas i said you know how many times have we said on air that Pros players dislike this map. How many times have we seen proxies already on this map at this exact location? Genius just played the map. He said, you know what? I got other plans to the other maps. I'm going to take a risk here. Voidrella and Byung did the same thing. It's just that when these two risks collide, the Pros player always gets an advantage. And Genius now with a one all lead over his opponent in this best of three. The second map is already hostile. We are in the lobby. It's going to be Ohana. Genius also, you know, something about him is he was so patient with the defense of the Marines. He actually decided not to risk trying to hit one of those forces on the ramp. He wanted to make sure he could trap the Marines and kill them with his probes. Really well done. Such utter patience out of him. He sacrificed a few harvesters and then he was just moving in. There were not enough Marines for Byung. Byung looked strong against first in the first round of Code A, but maybe he is not strong enough to face Genius here. The Slayers player with one all lead in the best of three. And now we're heading into map number two. It's going to be Ohana. And if, well, if Genius is able to win another map, he will advance to the third round of Code A and is so close of achieving his goal to advancing to Code S. We'll find out who's going to win Ohana in just a few seconds. The map has been hosted. Let's get started here at the GSL with Genius against Pyong.